and 100 talents of silver we used to cast the bases for the sanctuary. And for the curtain, 100 bases for the 100 talents. So they used a lot of silver too. And of course bronze. Um, the, the silver was how much? Well, the bronze was two and a half tons. So there's a lot of stuff. I know. That's. I listened to it while I was eating my breakfast, and I was like, man. But they, they, they were it. They're talking about moving it from one place to the other. They was carrying it in the first place because right. they had it with them. So just putting it all together and carrying it different. So they had a lot of mules, too, mm -hmm. to well, carry the stuff. Most of this weight was in rings and bobbles. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And yeah. If you, 630,000 men with a little bit of ring, a few rings on them, you can carry tons easy. With six, when you spread it out among 600,000, just the men, and you had women and children too. So they were all carrying a little bit of gold. All right. You know, the other thing to, to glean from this, which isn't mentioned, is the closer you get to the Holy of Holies, the the uh, more yeah it's more valuable right. is, is the yep. yeah. metals they're using. Yep, yep. We hear that in one of the <coughs> earlier chapters. It tells us that the gold was used in the the tabernacle and the Holy of Holies, and then as you move out, like Jerry said, the, the metal gets cheaper and cheaper. So that when we get to the um, uh, the altar, that's only covered in bronze. It's important, but not as important as where God is housed. So Jerry's absolutely right. There's, there's even a progression in which type of metals were used. So the gold would be considered precious. Right. right. And then, because Jesus is precious, is that the reason? Well, um, we... It, it's the most precious material was used because that was closest to God. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Just look like they'll leave it, the, the gold, the metals are, are gold, silver, and bronze too. Mm -hmm. the yeah, in the Olympics. Okay, so, so, so the, the value of them. It's, it's held its value. Mm -hmm. Exodus 39 has some very interesting things in here. Now, it talks about the priestly garments, and that's, you know, that is interesting in itself. In the earlier chapters, we, did, we discussed what was so interesting about it, about how the 12 tribes were inscribed on the... Um, shoulders? The, the, sho the shoulder, whatever they call those shoulder things. Epilots. Epilots, or yep. something like that. The epilots, yep. Mm -hmm. So the 12 tribes were inscribed on there, so every time the priest went into the Holy of Holies, he brought the traditions with them. The old. Is there anything that says the, the different um, jewels that they used, the different kinds, were they specific to a certain tribe or were they just... Well, each, they had 12 jewels and each jewel was representative of the tribe. I'm not quite sure how they designated which tribe got which jewel. I yeah. I think it's in one of the back chapters, almost possibly yeah, talked about sure that. Yeah, but I'm not sure it says why. Oh, no, but yeah. that each jewel was. So there, when we look at the screen, Jerry's showing us how the, the ephod, that, that chest plate, has the 12 jewels on it. If we look at, at chapter 39, we see seven times we see the phrase, the Lord commanded Moses. They made sacred garments for Aaron as the Lord commanded Moses. Uh, it was skillful, the skillfully woven woes, waistband was like it, one piece of the blue, purple, and scarlet yarn as the Lord commanded Moses. They fastened them to the shoulder pieces of the ephod as memorial stones for the sons of Israel as the Lord commanded Moses. Moses had to, to construct this or in, instruct them to construct it exactly as the Lord commanded Moses. And we're told seven times to let us know that this was 
the command was complete. God told Moses specifically, this is the way you have to do it. Um, and commentaries believe that it, we hear the seven commands for a couple of purposes, that it placed Moses above all the other Levitical priests. He's the one that received the command right from God. So even though Aaron was in charge of the, the Levitical police, uh, priests, Moses was on top of them. Moses was in charge. He was God's spokesman. And uh, God was so specific in these garments that the Aaron, Aaronite priests had to wear to set them aside from everybody else. That they would be identified as the people going into the Holy of Holies. But once again, there's our, our numerical study. Seven times we see God commanding Moses. And if we, when we go to um, verse uh, chapter 39, beginning in verse 32, all the work was done by everybody else, but it wasn't satisfactory to God until Moses inspected it. God told Moses, all right, all the work is done. You need to make sure that it's done exactly like I told you. So all the work on the tabernacle, the tent of meeting was completed. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord commanded Moses. Then they brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent and all its furnishings. Can you imagine? They constructed all this. Then they had to bring it past Moses for inspection. Just incredible. I got the impression, it says that setting up the tabernacle, I got the impression that, that the, the different people were making the different parts and they didn't know how it all fit together to the last minute. That could be too. That's, that's the impression I got. Yeah. And because it's talks in, in 40, it says something about setting up the tabernacle and putting it all together and things. And I'm thinking maybe mm -hmm. different, you know, there, there was so many people working on it that they were told how to make things and then to the last minute they didn't know how these all going to fit together. Yeah, that's possible. I think so too. It's like they gathered it all. Yeah. Um, they don't really put a timetable on how long it took either. In, in no. the second year, they, they put it together. Second, it was the entire year. Mm -hmm. From and the beginning of the year to the end I, of the I, year. I don't, it didn't say exactly, but they, they set it up in the second year. And when you look at everything they built <laughs> on the screen, that's incredible. None of that came prefabricated. You know, they didn't go to Home Depot and buy the fence posts and <laughs> the, the curtains. Uh -huh. They actually had to weave the curtains <coughs> and make the fences. <coughs> and do the embroidery. And, and do the embroidery and, and melt the gold, silver, and bronze and hammer it. Just think of two years' work. But resting on the Sabbath. And, and resting on the Sabbath. That's right. Right. And then the way it was put together, you know, it just, it was something they could put together and take apart multiple times. Right, right, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Because when God said move, you move. The Israelites had done all the work just as the Lord commanded. Moses inspected the work and saw they had done it just as the Lord had commanded. Three times we're told that the Israelites had done all the work just as the Lord commanded. So when we, when we go to our, our website that talks about numbers in the Bible, Three is the number of completeness. So they did. They carried out God's commands completely. Nothing was missed. And because they did that, Moses blessed them. Moses blessed them. He gave God's blessing only after he checked everything out to make sure it was to, to specifics. Just incredible. Then the Lord said to Moses in chapter 40, Set up the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, on the first day of the first month. <coughs> Place the Ark of the Covenant law on it, and shield the Ark with the curtain. Bring in the table. Even setting it up, God gave the specific rules. Do this, then do that. Do it exactly like I tell you to. Boy, Moses is incredible. He had to remember all this. Take the anointing oil, anoint the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils, consecrate the altar, and it will be most holy. So after Moses inspects it, 
He's the one that sets it up. God only trusts Moses. This is a job that can't be delegated to anybody else. Only he can do it. Then, Moses even has to, <laughs> he has to consecrate Aaron, dress Aaron, anoint him, so that he may serve me as priest. Aaron can't do it for himself. Moses has to do it. And Moses did everything just as the Lord commanded him. Again, we see how many times we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In chapter 40, eight times Moses did everything just as the Lord commanded him. And um, I did get eight. Yep, eight times. Um, the number eight in the Bible represents a new beginning, hmm. a new order. So here God is saying, whatever you did in the past, that's done. You're doing it a new way. And we're going to do it through sacrifice and through atonement. And we're going to do it in my tabernacle. Just amazing. The Lord commanded him. And Moses carried it out. What a dutiful employee. We're going to see later that Moses does make mistakes, but right now he's doing pretty good. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle in verse 35. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meetings because the cloud had settled in on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. All the, the Israelites who were willing, they gave of their money, they gave of, of their, their riches, they gave of their time, because they knew that when the tabernacle was built, that God would be with them. God would finally live among them. Even though he disowned them at one time, because of Moses' intercession, God is now living with them. That's why they, they decided to do all this stuff. Verse 36, In all the travels of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. Hmm. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and fire was in the cloud by night, in the sight of all the Israelites during their travels. So the Israelites could, would know that God was there. They had this visible image that God was always with them. Now Moses didn't go back up the mountain after that. Nope. He didn't, he had, had he no didn't have to. He didn't have any other contact with God after that other than through prayer. Because he wasn't allowed, he wasn't a priest. Right. Interesting. Yeah. All the work he did and then poof. Well, but but I'm sure God still talked to him. Oh, and yeah. And we know God still talked to him because we'll see it in later chapters. Right. But you're right. He's not the priest, so he that's not his role. Right. Everyone's got their role. Mm -hmm. And whenever God lifted the cloud, they had to tear it all down and move out for 40 years. Well, we'll hear about that later. Leviticus. Yeah. Finally. When did we start Exodus? I have no idea. <laughs> if you thought repetition was bad in Exodus, wait till you get to Leviticus. The repetition is continual all yeah. through. Yeah, and numbers. Yeah. yeah. For a purpose, mm -hmm. so we don't forget. Just think how many times God had to repeat to Moses all these instructions before Moses remembered. Or, or, did, or did, did he? Did Mo, or was Moses one that could had photo, like photographic memory? Could remember it that all. That could one. be one of the gifts that God gave Moses because it was so essential. <laughs> I'm saying I. He had to have some gifts for God, for God to entrust that much to him with so many details. Well, we know he had the gift of leadership because he was able to lead millions through the desert for 40 years. He had uh, the ability to have people follow him because they listened to him. He had the gift of patience. Gift, yeah. Yeah. That he I'm had. sorry, those people, yeah. That he yeah. had because they were a stiff-necked people. Mm -hmm. And he stuck up for them. Mm -hmm. Both gotten better about speaking. Yeah, isn't in front that of them too. I mean, Aaron yeah. disappears early on, even though 
Yeah. So that was probably just an excuse Moses had. Yeah. One of his, <laughs> one of his seven excuses. So, cool. That's it. We're th we're through Exodus. What did we start? Bible we were just asking. Well, Bible 101, we started last. Was it before Easter? Mm -hmm. November? We were down to Was it November? Huh. It was last fall. Wow. I was thinking it was November. We're going to be doing this for quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a geologic <laughs> weirdness. Geological weirdness in Sinai. Uh huh. Yeah. 